We're at Frameless Gallery on Clerkenwell Green, and I'm with Thomas and Katharina from Misha Trexler, two very young Austrian designers. Tell us a little bit about yourselves and where you're from and the kind of work that you do. Our studio is based in Vienna, and we have the studio since 2009. And we try to focus on our projects on the context they are based in and the stories the project can tell and the messages they can convey. When I think about your work, I think about machines. Your, your work often involves things that make things in front of you, where the, the, the production of the object is almost as important as the object itself. I mean, behind us here, we have a machine spinning away. Can you tell us a little bit about this project? Yeah, this project is called Collective Works, and it's actually a machine which is just fully functioning if people are watching it or are paying attention to it. It's more like production interest. So if no one is interested in the object, nothing is produced. So the more people come and join the machine, the more happy it gets and the more color is activated. So now that we are including the camera, five, we have all four pens active. But as soon as somebody leaves, the first darkest color is gone. Then it like, goes less and less. And if nobody is here, it stops completely. And vice versa, if somebody comes again, the machine starts producing by pulling a veneer strip through. And then the more people join, the more colors activated, and the machine gets really happy. So it's almost like a child showing off. If people are watching it, 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 <laughs> it performs more, it gets noisier and more colorful. But for you as designers, do you think that the, the machinery, the process, is more interesting than the end product, or are they both interesting no. to you? For us, both are equally important, because if the end result has not the quality that for us as a coming from a product and furniture background has to be a proper product. So if the process ends in just something to look at, for us it's not enough because we see that the process is part of the design, like the starting point, like the breathing part, but then the outcome needs to be as strong as the process, otherwise it doesn't function that well. Especially this project is more really for festivals to show what machines could be about. It's not always just about quick production, it can be as well about collaborations. It's like the more people are involved in the process, the more colorful and vivid and bigger the outcome gets. So it's about collaborations and to somehow celebrate togetherness in another way. And in a way you could say that you're bringing sort of soul and, and feeling into machines because just as in the same way that the craftsperson will express their mood or their mistakes in, in the handmade object, you're harnessing variables like sunlight or the movement of people to, to put mistakes almost and humanity into machine-made objects. Yeah, we try to give kind of a freedom to the machines as well. And, but I think it's not really mistakes or something and it's not uh, randomness. It, everything has like a reason when it looks different. But I guess in, in the sort of old-fashioned mass production industry, they would regard it as a mistake because there they expect every single of those one million widgets to be absolutely identical and anything that varies from that is, gets thrown away. Yeah, if you compare it to that, then it's a mistake. <laughs> we see it also as a, as a potential to show that it's possible. Like if you connect, for example, machines to its surrounding, that you can also bring more influences in the whole production process. And then the object suddenly must produce unique pieces or that they're kind of telling a story what happens around this machine.